Hi guys, today I'd like to fix a major issue with this LaVolta BPS 305 Mark II power supply. Of course it has a couple of issues, like the still overheating rectifier, a safety issue with the mains wiring running directly underneath the power board, and of course it's horrible ripple. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please check out my review video I did on this power supply previously. I have a few ideas as to what may be the cause or the causes of these problems and on how to fix them. First, let's try to fix the ripple so it's actually usable. I'm going to set up the ripple measurement the same way I did in the previous ripple comparison video. Check that out if you missed it. For a load I'm using these three 5W power resistors connected in series, which I can load up to 1A at roughly 14.3V. I'm using this lead to tie the negative output terminal to ground since this power supply didn't come with a ground bar. Sadly I have no differential probes or any other suitable equipment here, so I'm measuring the ripple with this single one-to-one -one probe and it's not the best way possible to do it, but it's the best I can do right now. The oscilloscope is set to coupling AC, bandwidth limit 20 MHz, acquisition is set to peak detect and a couple of measurements for frequency, the RMS value and the peak-to-peak -peak value. First, let's get a baseline measurement for the ripple in original condition. Right now we are at 16.5 mV RMS value and peak to peak value of roughly 73 mV. Let's take that as our base values. As you may have also noticed, this signal looks a bit suspicious and I don't think most of it is actual ripple from the voltage regulation, but it's probably mains humming introduced inside of the power supply to the output signal. I have found a few clues as to what might be going on in here. For example, watch what happens when I turn off the output. The signal is still there. How can that be? So if the output is disabled and this isn't coming from the voltage regulation, that must mean that this part of the signal comes from another source. And here is another clue. We have our ripple back and now watch what happens if I disconnect the negative output terminal from ground. Whoa, most of our signal is gone. Look, we are now below 2 mV RMS, although this looks a lot noisier. We reduced the noise more than tenfold. I think this is the other part of the ripple. This is the actual ripple from the voltage regulation. This is what went missing when we disabled the output. And now we have the probable source of most of the ripple we have seen in the review video. The ground terminal. If I plug that back in, our ripple is back. Now let's open up the power supply and see what exactly is causing this and if we can improve it. Take a look at how the ground terminal is wired in here. The ground from the mains plug is screwed to this corner of the transformer. As you can see there is a tab and this goes to this tab on the mains plug. And the ground wire from the output terminal, which is this one, is screwed to this corner of the transformer. This is the opposite corner of where the other ground wire is screwed to. Having the transformer in your conductive path is a bad idea. If you have changing magnetic field flux across your conductor, you will have an inducted electron flow. And in this case, this is probably the source of most of our ripple. We can actually measure it. If I connect the probe to this side of the ground and the other end of the probe to the ground output terminal and I turn on the power supply, we have once again most of our ripple back. This is what we saw when we disabled the output. And now let's see what happens if we connect the negative output terminal to this ground point. I have to be a bit careful. Most of our noise is still gone. And we are only left with a true ripple from the power board. Almost like when we disconnected the negative terminal from the ground. If I connect it to the other side of the transformer, our noise comes back. See, that's our issue. I can connect it to another port in the transformer and we will get varying degrees of noise. So on this point it is very high. To fix this we have just to use a longer wire that connects our ground output terminal to this corner of the transformer and that's it. So just because LaVolta tried to save half a cent by shortening this ground wire, they introduced so much noise into the output and made the power supply so much worse. It isn't always wise to literally cut every corner. Uh, wait a minute. Is this why they left out the ground bar with this power supply? I mean, no ground bar, no ground noise. Wow, just wow. I mean, I can just envision the conversation during that meeting. 
the engineer goes like, hey, we get a lot of noise to our output ground terminal because this ground wire is too short. But it's an easy fix. We can make this wire just 10 centimeters longer. And while we add it, this is not the right color. Let's just upgrade to the right color and we are good to go. And you can just see all the managing types immediately shake their hands and wave their hands. No, 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 that's way too expensive. We can't do that. Just think of the poor children. And then the managing crowd starts thinking and you think, oh, oh that's not gonna go well. And before you're finished with that thought, the first manager goes like, well, how about if we don't use the output ground terminal then? And the second manager is like, yeah, why should we give away good ground for free anyway? And the third manager interrupts, hey, I have a great idea. Now that we don't need that ground terminal anymore, let's leave out the ground bar. We'll save another million billion dollars from this. And the manager four goes like, great job guys, we did it. And all the managers cheer and applaud themselves. Yeah, woo, awesome. And meanwhile, the engineer, shell shocked by the magnificent idiocy he just witnessed is just thinking, wait, what? Should I say something? I oh, know they're already rocking each other off. It's disgusting. And as he gazes out the window, he asks himself, is this for real? How did I get here? Uh, what am I even doing with my life? Yeah, those were the good old days. Anyway, let's fix that. I have replaced both ground wires, they are now long enough, 
have the proper color. At the ground output terminal I screwed it to the terminal itself, so no soldering there. I also replaced this ground wire. The ground wires are screwed at the foot of the transformer. I've also removed the paint from the metal casing and some coating of the transformer so there is proper electrical connection now there. Now let's do a final ripple measurement to see if we fixed the issue. And what do we get? And our ripple is now at 780 microvolts RMS. We are now below 1 millivolt RMS and the peak to peak value is 5.4 millivolts. Wow, this is now quite impressive. I didn't expect this mod to work that well. We dropped the ripple by more than an order of magnitude. That's great, that's what I call a successful mod. It was also fairly cheap and easy to do, so well worth the effort. Managing crowd, take notes. This is how you fix a technical issue. Don't just try and sweep it under the rug, hoping that dumb customers won't ever notice it. Listen to the engineers and actually fix it. We customers aren't that dumb. And with that awesome result, I would like to finish this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you liked this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. And since YouTube is hell-bent on turning into just another lame street media outlet and is trying to get rid of all the independent small content producers like me, it is time to move on to alternative tech. So follow me to Library or BitChoot. And as a bonus to these platforms, I will be releasing my videos there at least a week before I upload to YouTube. So thank you for watching. I'll see you another time. Bye.